Most people avoid trials at any cost. And that's why it's upside down. The Bible, God's word says, embrace them and look, be joyful when you get them. And if you can understand that everything God allows or causes is to help you grow in your faith, to help you be refined. Uh, trials, remember I said there's two types of trials because God just doesn't make a mistake and be asleep at the wheel. And you may have a couple trials hit your life and it's like, God, is, are you paying attention? Do you know this hit me? No, he's a micro on top of you, knows the hairs of every, uh, he, he says he knows you so well, he knows the hairs on your head. Wow. It's just, it's a statement of Jesus saying God knows everything. He's a, yeah. he, and everything he does is out of love, but discipline has to come out of love because he wants us to be holy. If you're not, if you're not continuing to strive to be holy, you're going to miss the grace of God. That yeah. means growing in the Lord. You don't earn your salvation, but you understand that God expects us to live out our faith, follow Jesus, and really be humble and acknowledge our sins and continue to, to let them refinely change us when we repent. Yes. Uh, and I would say there's two types of trials. Trials of correction and trials of maturity or perfection, so to speak. The Bible says Jesus uh, once made perfect endured the cross. Jesus never sinned, but he, but perfect in the translated Greek root is completely mature. Jesus had, as a human being, was born and grew up in the family of a human family with Mary and, and, and Joseph, his stepdad, God was his father, but he had to go through and, bec and, and, and allow himself to be obedient to his human parents, grow up, and then get to a point where he'd matured as an adult and then he continued to teach and grow in prayer and obedience, and he, he suffered, but he did it himself. And, and we need to grow in our maturity. Yeah. So trials of correction is what is God trying to do in getting your attention when, when a challenge comes? Maybe he's trying to help you see that the same fear of, or, 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 or anxiety or things that trigger you, you haven't learned yet. So he's not trying to punish you. He's trying to correct you and help you finally get to the point where you, God's going to take care of you. For instance, many of us may have fear of trusting God in our finances. Yeah. Well, he's going to keep coming around, and like that woman, she got a $5,000 check. Wow. He's not saying he's going to do that to everybody, but that woman, that's, that sister, that trusted God. And God just has a funny way of finally saying, you're getting it. Yeah. You're getting it. Put me first in everything. Yeah. Uh, so I want you to really be asking yourself what do you don't don't be going oh, and, and wasting these trials or hardships be praying for god what am i supposed to learn and then also trusting that god will never leave you or forsake you right. Amen. so we need to look at that now the other thing i i really hit was uh uh god teaches us to embrace those trials not run from them not yes. try to get out of them as quick as possible try to embrace them and go, what am I learning in my faith? Uh, so I can become more mature and stronger in the Lord, not just for me, but to help those around me. Yes. And then we also looked at emotions. When we struggle with anxiety or let our emotions be taken away by fear or sin, sin can take you and, and, and make your faith weaker. Yeah. Emotions have an IQ of zero. Remember, we talked about that. Yes. When you're really emotional, I think that's why the Bible says be slow to speak. Be slow to become angry. Why? Because when you're angry and you're quick to speak, your emotions are going to take over and you're going to do or say or both something you regret. Yes. And you're going to hurt people. And when you hurt people with your words, people can forgive you, but we can't. It, it hurts. So emotions, when you're strong in your emotions, it's best you sit still and think through and pray yes. and not just act out. Don't text or react, right? Most of the times when we do that, we regret it. Yes. Emotions have an IQ of zero. Emotions and feelings. And, uh, you know, it, we need to remember this. We cannot trust our emotions when, we, when they're going off the grid unspiritually. Because then you start to lose your spiritual mindfulness and your sinful mindfulness takes over. Yes. So uh, Come on, honey. let's look at uh, Luke chapter 13, verse, okay. I mean, Luke chapter 16, verse 13. Come on. And uh, I hope you're, this book of James is an amazing book. Yes. Yes. 
it really is such a fundamental book. Anybody can really understand it. Uh, no one can serve two masters in verse 13. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your hearts. What people highly, what, with people, uh, what people value highly is detestable in God's sight. Think about that. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. So once again, upside down. Yes. Upside down. Anyone who wants to have a leader that is mature, wise, and discerning, uh, well, we got to ask, that's, we all want that, right? We want competent people, whether they're in the church or out of the church, and yeah. faithful but how do people become those types of leaders? By going through trials and coming out the other side and growing and learning to embrace them from a learning lesson and their faith is, is, is improved and refined and grows because your faith won't grow unless you actually learn from and suffer righteously, yeah. suffer with faith. If you don't react right, you're going to be stuck, and God's going to keep revisiting you with the same lessons because he can't just pass you. He'd be deceiving you. You've got to get strong, and there's no way around it except through hardship and adversity and trials, yes. and we all have to learn. Uh, everyone who wants a tested leader, one that will not run away when life or opposition gets tough, that's what that means. In marriage, we are actually in the kingdom. We vow to our spouses that I won't run away Amen. when life gets tough and the marriage gets challenging. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to run away. Oh, well, I mean, you look at it and anything you do is Jesus Lord. You're not running away anymore. Yes. You're going to resolve. You don't end friendships because you're hurt. Yes. You work like Jesus as a peacemaker. Come on. You know. Uh, we want someone who has faith to see the job through. Yeah. We marry people to see the marriage to the end till death do us part in the kingdom. Divorce yeah. doesn't even exist in the heavenly dictionary. Yeah. You can be forgiven, but God says if two disciples get married, he's going, I died for you to make it all the way, man. Amen. Uh, and, and faith, we want, we want people to have faith, the faith that God will help them overcome whatever's in their path. I hope you're feeling that way about your individual life. You may be going through a heck of a time right now. Yeah. And uh, you're not supposed to compare, but you have to look at the Bible, look at your faith, and look at God's promises. And the more you can believe those and endure, you're going to grow. And the, the anxiousness and the fear and all that garbage that comes with non-trust yeah. will start to dissipate because the faith will help you see through yeah. with God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so then let's look at James chapter 1, verse 5. Okay. So we, need to, we just learned that we need to embrace our pain because you know it brings great gain in your character. Yes. And if you don't grow in your character, I would question if you're going to make it faithfully. Mm -hmm. Because deny yourself, carry your cross daily, and follow me takes character. Yeah. Sure takes character. you gotta, you got to decide. In, uh, in verse 5 of James chapter 1, it says, any, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, and who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will give, be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man or woman should not think he, will receive, he or she will receive anything from the Lord. They are double-minded, unstable in all they do. Doubt is bad. That's, a, that's my little sub point. <laughs> Doubt is bad. I mean, who's going to go, well, I don't, who's going to disagree with that? Yeah. Doubt in anything. I don't know if we're going to be able to win. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I mean, come on. If you're on a team, you don't know the ending, but at least you want to approach it like we're going to give it everything we got. Amen. Oh, we can't win. We can't. I mean, what's that do to people? naysayers to you you tell your dream or your vision and oh you're not gonna be able to do that that doesn't help you because no one knows what happened yet and whether you do it or not if you go into it with all the faith of god almighty you're still going to grow and learn yes. Come on, Fred. are you confused emotional uncertain 
worried. You're doubting God if you're like that consistently. If those emotions come up, we all have that. That's just doubt. Grab it. Doubt is probably one of the greatest sins. In Revelations, it says the cowardly, the unbelieving. Then it goes murders, sexual immoral. Murders and sexually immoral are with, the, are with cowards and unbelieving. Wow. So we will doubt, but you've got to capture those thoughts. And that's why you need to be in your word every day, because the word of God will help you trumpet with your faith. Because if you're doubting yourself and your decisions, you're like being blown back and forth. The Bible says you're double-minded. That's not good. Wow. What I really love about this verse is how it describes God as generous. No matter where you're at spiritually, he says, without finding fault. So you're hurting yourself, but he's, not pull he's still generous. Mm -hmm. You notice that? It says here, when you ask, he, when he asks, you must believe and not doubt because uh, I mean, before that, in verse, first, verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. But he says, now, if you're going to go the way of doubt and, and struggle, then it's not God's problem. He's already told you the truth. See, God's laid us the truth out in the Bible. He doesn't keep coming back going, come on, believe me. Yeah. It's already there. You're, you are struggling with what God's word says. Come on. And, that's, and we're all fragile. Don't get me wrong. But you've got to grasp it because if you don't grow in that, you're going to be tossed back and forth emotionally. Yeah. You're, going to, you're not going to enjoy your life as a disciple. You're going to have like one foot in the kingdom and one foot out, and you're going to be miserable both ways. Come on. It's either all in or all out with God. I mean, he's going to put up and give you grace, but you're not going to be happy yourself. Come on. Did my voice just go self? <laughs> what the heck caused that? Trebez, can you get a psychological analysis on me later? All right. <laughs> Puberty? All right, that's great. I'm going to my second, the second wave of puberty is coming. Hi, how you doing? Well, I'm learning to walk again, so maybe I am going through my childhood. So, God says he's so, God is, the Bible talks about over and over how generous God is. You can't outgive God. He's so generous with grace. Though he is poor for our sake, though he's rich for our sake, he became poor. And he's just saying, I'm here. And it, it, he, the Bible uses words like this. He lavished his love on us in Ephesians. Lavished. That's a word we don't use a lot, but lavished his love. Come on. He's, just, he's just so love. He loves us so much, each one of you. Come on. And uh, so the time we doubt the most is when we are in sin. Yeah. Or just have come out of sin. Come on. Because, or when we're weak or unspiritual. Uh, the time we feel like God will not want to be there for us, God says otherwise. Yeah. I'm here no matter what. It's your sin that hurts you. When you sin, even when you repent, your, your faith is weaker. Yeah. So you take hits. God forgives you, but your faith is weaker. It's not just a magic wand, right? You get married. You're not just like, okay, now it should be natural. No, you need to decide daily to love with agape love. Yeah. As Christians, we need to decide to love people with the self-sacrificial love, not feelings, not going, I click with you. No, we're going to love the exact opposite, the strangers Amen. in our lives, the people that, that completely, completely, if before we became Christians, we wouldn't have anything to do with or vice versa. Right. Because God squeezes out the prejudice, the arrogance, the self-righteousness, right? Yeah. And then we realize we're no better than anybody. No. Who am I? On, Challenge for you. Yes. Pray for your family. Pray for your career. Pray for your health. Ask God for that wisdom to make godly approved decisions in your life. Pray daily on that and don't stop with doubt. I think some of us go around our families and we subconsciously have just decided they're not going to be open. So we don't even get into it with them anymore. We just visit. So it may be challenging, but why not? If you know your family or people in your family is not saved... But you, don't, you just do it for the sake of, I don't want to rock no bolts. You're just going to go through life, and then at their funeral, you're going to feel, you're going to feel terrible for not challenging. Oh, yeah. You know, once you can understand someone's life, you've got to be able to get into it, not be harsh, not be mean, but you've got to ask questions and not, willing, not be willing to be afraid of the uncomfortableness that comes with it. Now, you're not going to force it if they don't want you, but at least you should share your life yes. and share what God did for you and even go, I'm shocked what I learned in the Bible. I never knew this. Can I show you? Come on. But you've got to be willing to get into it. Yeah. Sometime in your life, you got to pray for wisdom because otherwise it's just, I don't want no rock to boats. 
I've done it. I, had to, I got it. Every family member of mine knows. And only one has come through. But I feel justified before the Lord, and I pray for them still, but I'm not trying to be, you know, overbearing or anything, but I would sure feel guilt-ridden if I didn't get into it and talk to every family member and bring it up or the point where they, you know, persecute me or whatnot, because I need to do what I need to do for God. Amen. I need to be an ambassador for Christ. Yes. Not because I know anything. I'm no better than anybody, but I found the truth. Why wouldn't you want to go, whoa? See, the Bible, everything in the Word of God is upside down, especially people in the world mostly think they're fine. So they get threatened when you bring up the Scriptures with them because they just can't believe someone, especially a sibling or a son or a daughter, they bailed you out and helped you when you grew up. And now you're telling me you got it figured out? It's pride. Verse 9. James 1, 9. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in this low position because he will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. It blossoms, its blossoms falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. See, the world says get rich. Be rich. Rich is good. The Bible says if you're rich, you better really be focused spiritually. Because it doesn't condemn being rich, but it very much says it's very challenging. Jesus says it's very hard for a rich man or woman to make it into heaven. It doesn't say it's sin. Come on. It's just, whoa, something happens with status, money, and fame. It takes a great maturity. That's why you should be taking those trials, man, and really going, is this maturity trial? Because you get to a point where when you are blessed, you stay so sold out to God, and then you use your status and generosity to, to just have more influence for Christ. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Come on, Chris. God says poor. You who need wealth, God says that you should be poor. You should learn to live on just God because those who need wealth to be happy and content will be disappointed. And that's what he means by the rich. He goes, you don't even understand. You're fired up, and you're going to wither away even while you're still going because if you're trusting in money, it's so uncertain. Mm -hmm. And your joy will sure go up and down like a meter on your finances because people um, get rich and then lose their money. Get rich, and it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So why it is important to save and have a budget and be successful, don't let it be a heart issue. Yeah. Bible says where your treasure is, your heart is, and the kingdom of God needs to be your treasure. Right. Um, rather, we should we, rather you know, the Bible says be the poor man uh, finds out that he does not need wealth and comfort for happiness. The man who has time free from distraction to focus on the relationship with God and people is happy. The person who's stressing and having to work so much to keep their lifestyle, it's like what does a man gain if he gains the whole world? Why would you? You got to look at like what kind of life do I want to have? Do I want to work? most of my hours of the 160 hours of a week i mean you may need to crank it i had a company one time when it started and i had to crank 12 hours a day i'd leave and, and for for a while but i was a disciple i wasn't in the ministry but i got it running eventually where i ain't doing this like this and i got it running because i'm not staying in a job that calls me to a responsibility but let, but but doesn't allow me to be a fired up sold out disciple more than just making meetings of the body or barely yeah. be able to make it. That's not what God calls us to live. Come on. Look in Luke 6.20. Awesome. Come on, Chris. It said, looking at his disciples, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Uh, if you cannot be happy without money, possessions, and material things, how are you going to be happy in heaven mm. <laughs> where there are none of those things? I'll say it again. If you cannot be happy without money, possessions, and material things, how are you going to be happy in heaven where there are none of those things? Now, don't take the extreme. Don't walk out here going, Chris said you don't, you don't need to work and be fired up and shoot, shoot for success and try to take it to a higher level and want to go after it. But it shouldn't be just, I want to make money. If that comes with your dreams, praise God, but be generous. Yes. 
help God save souls with it. So be successful. If you're not shooting for the stars, then you're being mediocre and lackluster. The Bible on. says just as you excel in everything, faith, speech, life, yes. and the grace of giving. So God wants us to be the best we can with everything. Amen. It's not about measurement. It's not about comparing with each other. Yes. Compare, despair. Yes. Yes. So uh, embrace hard times financially as a, as a privilege. God's teaching you something. Amen. Now, it, you got to look at this. Either it's correction, and maybe your life in the past, you squandered it, you made stupid decisions. We all do. Yep. But just be humble and dig out. Right. Takes sometimes years. Just dig out. Amen. And, uh, and then ask yourself, do you need that, that level of car? No one's going to tell you, but ask yourself, is it wise? Mm -hmm. Is it going to push me? Do I want that car payment? Yeah. Do I want that phone payment? Do I want this or that? I mean, you know, the world, society in, in our world has made it available. Most, almost anybody can go get a car. They'll tell you yeah. bankrupt, no job. Uh, <laughs> actually you saying you're not going to get a job, we'll still figure it out for you. Because they don't care. If they can get you off the lot, they don't care. If you get it possessed, they don't care. The whole insurance and all the racket, they just want to get you off the lot. They don't care. Yeah. you got to care. Come on. Why is so up, down, upside down? Why? Well, let's close out here in James 1. 12. Come on. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Trials and perseverance and tests are coming your way, yeah. my way. Doesn't matter if you are a Christian or not, they're coming. Yeah. How will you handle them? And how are you handling your present trials, tests? Are you are you babying yourself? Do you even know how to persevere? Do you weak and just cave in at challenges? Well, we're going we're gonna to be there. God's going to be there for each other. But you've got to ask yourself, what do you do when, when you, you get offended or something happens? Do you check out emotionally and then come back? God's grace is there, but you've got to realize you're a target. When are you finally going to grow in that? Because one of these times you may not turn back. Don't just take for granted the grace. It's there, but you can damage your heart. You still have to make your decision daily. Yeah. Deny yourself, carry your cross daily, and follow me. Uh, so, uh, you know, how will you handle your challenges now in the future? Because you know that heaven awaits where God will be waiting to give you eternal life. That's a good motivation. Yes. What is the greatest award you've ever received in your life? Mm. What will it be like receiving eternal life? See, you're promised eternal life, but you're not there yet. We're on earth with the same problems, illnesses, sicknesses. We've been promised eternal life. But you haven't got it yet. When you die, you'll have it. Come on. Faithful to the end. Your Amen. faith is what saves you in the blood of Christ, not just at that moment. As you continue to show and prove your faith genuine, you're not earning it, but your faith in Christ and living day to day, making that decision to repent to, 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 to grow either way. You just yeah. need to continue to persevere. So I wonder if we will compare trials, if we compare trials with the early Christians who were burned at the stake mm. or flogged like Paul, Come on. people with those kind of trials, how do we match up and, or are we kind of babying ourselves? Mm. And I'm not the judging here. I'm just saying how, how tough are you? And you always can find out when something's happening how you're handling it. If you handle it, cry, get open with people, pray. Emotions come, grab them, but, but you just, just get out there emotionally and depressed and pull back and th th get over that. Grow out of that. You're a target. You're, in, you're, you're weak. Grow out of it. Yeah. Or you're just going to be a target. Yeah. It does, you're not happy when you do that, so grab God and go, this time I'm going to be stronger. Polycarp is recorded as saying on the day of his death, he was a martyr, one of the first recorded martyrs, 86 years I served him, and he has done me no wrong. How then can I blaspheme my king and savior? You threaten me with burning me to the stake, which will burn only for a little while. I'll be dead quickly. And after that little while and I'm dead, you don't understand how ignorant you are of the fire of everlasting punishment that is prepared for those who don't repent. 
Polycarp was burned at the stake and was pierced with a spear for, review, for refusing to burn incense to the Roman emperor. That means making him Lord, not Jesus. On his farewell, he said, I bless you, Father, for judging me worthy of this hour so that in the company of the martyrs I may share the cup of Christ. Jesus said, Father, uh, may this cup be taken from me. He wasn't saying, he was saying, I, I, is there another way? You can be honest with God when you're struggling. But he says, God, Father, if this is your will, I'm going to do it. And he did, he did drink that cup of trial. Yeah. The trial of being tortured, beaten, hung on a cross, and then he got to raise up from the dead. But he had to make the decision as a human being to push through and God. We must look at things through God's eyes. It's not about the here and now, but the later and the future. Embrace your future, and you'll act, some, you'll act much calmer and cooler because it's not about you and me once we're saved. It's a bigger picture. It's about the movement of God. Everybody is doing their part, and no one in heaven's going to look back and go, Gosh, I wish I didn't give that much. Yeah. You'll probably go, what was wrong with my heart at certain times where I was not giving the way I should have, the, what Jesus did for me? And this isn't a guilt trip. This is just get your heart focused yeah. Yeah. off yourself and realize Jesus is Lord and Savior. And to God be the glory. Yeah.